because the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame took so long to induct you guys that John Lord was no longer with us when that happened. Can you talk about that evening from your perspective and what the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame meant to you and how, how you felt about the whole thing? Well, since we got turned down twice, it was declined twice. And despite you know other people, you know, um, Metallica, uh, Rush, people saying you know you should be in there. After two de- de- declines, we decided uh, we don't really need that. We never actually wanted that in the first place. It never occurred to us that we were missing something, and so we always felt like saying, "Well, go shove it." Um, but uh, we came to realize, Ian Gillen said, "You know, it's it, you know, it, think about it this way: it's not for us." It's for the fans, and it's for your family and your friends. That's what it's really for. And uh, don't take it so personally, seriously. Um, so a, the, the main thing about the evening that, uh, that I remember is I'm really pissed off that Nick Simper wasn't there. Nick Simper was the, the original bass player. And the original singer, he was you know, nominated, or um, got it, but the, the bass player didn't, and that really pissed me off. I found it rather embarrassing. Yeah, there's a lot. Uh, that's the that's the crazy thing about that institution is that once you finally do get in, the arbitrary choices for which members they include in the induction and which aren't are sometimes head scratching and mind boggling. So that certainly did not make any sense. You know, of course, Blackmore was not there. I guess he declined. W- was that your understanding? Well, yes, it was our understanding for months before that he was not going to show up. Right, and. Uh, and that was, you know, the, the stories about we we stopped him from coming, which we didn't. That was his decision. Um, there's lots of stories banding around. There's like conspiracy theories now. <laughs> um, but the truth of it is, all, all we wanted to do, if we were going to do it, we wanted to play as the band that we were with Steve Morse and Don Airy. Right. You know, the band, and, and uh, if Richie had wanted to come and play Smoke in the Water, I, I would have been fine with that. We'd have been fine with that. We, in fact, we half expected him to turn up anyway, just because you can never know with Richie what he's going to do. <laughs> um, you thought out of the shadows there he would come emerging during the middle of a song you, or something? You, you never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he, he deserves that, you know, of course. Right. So, uh, I would have been fine with that. I mean, you you have uh, Raj, One one thing on one thing on Blackmore, and I won't I won't pain you on this, but I, I got to ask you this because you have a, a an interesting perspective on Blackmore because you not only played with them in Deep Purple, but you worked with them pretty extensively in Rainbow. With with you know, I just talked to Graham Bonnet was on this show the other day. We talked a lot about Down to Earth, and then of course when Joe Lynn Turner came in. So you've you've worked with Richie over the decades on a lot of different. Uh, settings and capacities, and in the band and producing and what have you. What what do you what is your uh, you know what is your takeaway from from him? What what do you think uh, when you you look at his uh, his body of work and what he does now or what he does not do? What what do you think makes him tick? Do you think it's somewhat of a, a put on just to create all this mystery around him, or do you just think that's really how he's wired? I think both. I think he is wired that way, but uh, he enjoys it. He enjoys putting people on edge and people not quite knowing what he's up to. Um, that's just his personality, I guess. But he's, uh, you know, first and foremost, a musician. And it, it, you, you've got to t- take the music away from the man. Because the music alone is brilliant. He was an you know, incredible player, an auteur, an instigator. He had, a, he had, he was on his road and we were with him on that road for a while. And that's what I feel about him now with Rainbow. I remember um, when he asked me to join Rainbow, I said, well, um, I don't want any more changes. Let's, let's have a, you know, a consistency going. That didn't happen. <laughs> but that's what I wanted. Um, but he's, uh, he's mercurial and he follows his own instincts. And when he, when I got sort of eased out of the band in 73, um, there were still plans to try and carry on without him and stuff. I can't remember now. But um, on the very last gig, he didn't say anything to me except pass me on the stairs. And he said, um, it's not personal, it's business. Hmm. And that actually meant a lot because although I was going through hell being thrown out of the biggest band in the world at the time, 
um, that, that meant from him, he was sincere about that. It, it wasn't personal. And uh, we always seemed to get along pretty well. So uh, I, I'd never expected him to turn around and ask me to produce Rainbow. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I was when we did the album. We, we started it without without a proper bass player, without a singer. Um, it was kind of chaos. And so I ended up playing bass and writing all the songs with him. Um, and it was only when the album was finished that Don Airy and, and Cozy Powell said, how come you're not in the band? <laughs> so I, I, just, I guess words were had and eventually I got knocked into the band. So that's how I joined Rainbow. And it was a, a different setup to Purple. Purple was a democratic unit, more or less. Uh, but Rainbow was his. He he was the governor. So I understood that. Do you have any- when we had Purple again in, in Perfect Strangers, I mean, it came back to being almost as democratic as it was in the early days, but it, it wasn't quite because Richie got so used to being, you know, the man in charge, and uh, and so history, you know, is made by the ups and downs. You have any, after Perfect Strangers. You have any relation? Perfect Strangers. I think we went. I'm we sorry, went through a bit of a down period. After yeah. Perfect Strangers, we went through a bit of a down period. Um, and the music wasn't happening, and then Ian Gillen got fired, and Joel and Turner came, and then Gillen came back, and it was a bit weird, the doldrums, really. Um, but when Steve joined, it, it, um, it changed, and we changed back to the the, the, uh, the arrangement in the early days was that we all shared everything, the writing credits. We all shared in it because we felt that this wasn't a pop song. This wasn't regular kind of music. This was the way Ian Pace played the drums was as much a part of the writing of the band as any riff or vocal. And so we all shared everything. And, and to me, that was great. Um, and it wasn't until Steve Morse joined the band that we said, right, let's go back to that. And uh, to me, it's 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 free. It's freeing. There's no politics involved. There's no egos involved. There's no hurt feelings. It's, we all join. We all join in together. Yeah, and to me that's great. That's what makes that's what makes this band what it is now. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but Richie, I mean, whatever he wants to do, he still. I mean, he's going to do it anyway. <laughs> he's, he's. I think he's on this road, and he's he's, he's uh, on this road. He's the road of his own making, and I can completely understand that. He believes in himself as an artist much more than a celebrity. Right. Yeah, I'm going back to Steve Morse. I mean, Steve does uh, an unbelievable job. And I, I remember when Steve first joined Purple and the first record you made with him and seeing you guys on that first tour and then having seen you play recently with him. I mean, he he has really put his imprint on Deep Purple. And if I'm not mistaken, he's probably the longest consecutive ten, tenured member or, or certainly guitar player in the band, I would think, at this yeah. point. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I think I, what, I'm not counting, but um, uh, I think people tell us that. You know, we don't actually make notes of things. But people tell us, "Oh, Steve's been in the band longer than Richie." Oh, okay. It's not something we think about that much, but uh, sure, it's true. And the consistency since then, since the uh, '94, there's only been one change, and that's when John left and Don joined. So it's. It's it's good to be in a consistent band. You know each other really well, and there's no, you know, you get you respect each other and love each other. Thank you for tuning in, and please hit that like button. It's appreciated. Make sure that you subscribe for more rock-related content.